Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. This thing has an ignition issue and there are a few ways around it. Obviously to get it running, uh, I initially put this portable CDI box on it. After that, I went to uh, go back to the OEM ignition system and I wired it all up and this, this is a spare. Um, I pulled the CDI out and I checked the ohm value for all those points in there and they were what they should be. So I put it all back together and it wouldn't start and run, wouldn't spark. Um, so I messed with it some more and I got a spark and it would intermittently spark and it, it was just being fussy. So I said, okay, um, this is the right CDI for a 200 ES and that's important it's different than the M it's different than the E you actually have to use a 200 ES um, ignition in there or CDI box so I swapped that out and same thing then I swapped out the coil and the same thing so I said you know what um, at some point you just got to say hey 40 year old ignition components like are, is this any good um, we got to do something different so I decided to hack a 12-volt um, uh, pit bike ignition system into it, and it's, it's actually a lot easier than you think. So you could buy this ignition system as a kit, and you get the wire harness, you get the coil, and you get the four pin. You see there's only four pins in there, 12-volt CDI. And if you do that search, um, I got this from eBay. I don't know. If you buy a few of them, I think they're like 17, 18 bucks each. Um, but if you put that listing in, you might be able to get them from Amazon or someplace else. So you buy the ignition system, and what do you do? You obviously got to plug in the CDI, and then it's easy enough, right? You got those connectors I can't say the kind they are because you know our friends don't like that right you plug them in right black and yellow green black and yellow and green right so you just plug all that together and you're all good um, now you got to carry this over to your bike and we're gonna hook it up there so now to hook this up, it's really a piece of cake, right? I ended up putting the new CDI where the old one was. I just unplugged it. The wire harness is just fine. I just unplugged things. And I put the new spark coil where the old one was. Take note how, you know, we did attach the ground wire. This ground wire was there. Obviously spark plug wire onto the spark plug. Now, from your coil, right? These were plugged in before, right? As you look at the other end, at the business end here, right? Green wires go to ground. One green wire, right? You got your pulse generator. One green wire went to the pulse generator. The blue and white went to the blue and white on the pulse generator, right? All those things, could it be any easier? Uh, then you keep going, right? The black and red, wasn't quite long enough, right? I'm showing you this is black and red, I think. So I I put a green or um, red wire on it. And I ran this out to the wire harness that would normally stuff into the bucket of the headlight. And so when you turn this on, right, power goes right to that guy. So the CDI is happy, right? It's got power, it's got ground. It's got a coil, the coil's hooked up, right? The motor definitely has a nice ground, and it's got power, doesn't need anything else. You all might be looking at this going, yo, I see a um, black wire with a red stripe. Well, that doesn't hook up to anything, right? If you look at this, this is only a four pin, so it goes nowhere on the four pin. And normally, quite honestly, I end up cutting the wire and taking it 
the heck right out of the harness. You guys could leave it there. I just want to mention it so that I don't get 14 comments with the question, where does the black wire with the white stripe go? It goes nowhere. <laughs> anyway, once you smash this all together, I think you're going to be surprised on how well it runs, how easy it is to start, how happy you will be. Uh, for some of you guys in the more advanced class, right, you have a mechanical advancer in here. When you go to start it, it is in the delay mode. It delays the spark a little bit, and then it advances as you increase the RPM. When you go to start this thing, that's also in the delay mode. So you kind of have a double delay, and some of you may say, is that bad? Actually, it makes it a little easier to start the motor. It doesn't pull back on you. Try to jerk your arm out of the socket and beat you about the head and shoulders with the loose end. So um, that's a good thing, obviously. Now, as the RPMs advance, the delay goes away there, the mechanical advances, and you get back to right where you're supposed to be so you have your full performance. So it actually starts a bit easier, um, especially with the pull starter, and there you are. Uh, one other quick thing, for this thing to spark, to uh, pulse, you want your 12 volts. So if you have a weak battery in here, especially when you hit the electric starter, and you engage the electric starter, the voltage will go down low, you can lose spark. So make sure you got your 12 volts. If you got a real weak battery on there, put your uh, jump pack on there, and then use the pull string, it'll start right up. This thing needs 12 volts to fire. At 11.8, 11.4, depending on exactly which unit you're holding in your hand, your spark goes away. So you're going, oh, my battery's good, but I got no spark. What's wrong? You need your 12 volts. Okay? Not 11 and a half. You need 12. And if it's a little more than 12, like when it's running, you even get a better spark yet. Anyhow, now that this is all put together, I'm going to roll it out there. I'm going to show you that, in fact, you can turn it on and start it and go backwards and forwards and the lights all work and all that stuff. And we're going to take it for a nice long ride and bounce it about to make sure the connections aren't going to undo. Then we're going to tidy things up. I still have to patch the gas tank and do the front forks, so I have more work to do on this. But let's get a ride, right? Anyway, there we are. So whether your all-terrain vehicle is 40 days old or 40 years old, this is where you want to be. You want it to key start. It's a little cold. It's been You want it to shift easy, and this one does. I would use a little air and some tires. And let it warm up a little bit before I go too crazy. up that gas bottle very well. This thing has a collapsed front suspension. a hard rider. <laughs> I guess with the car, this car is not a perfect car. Not bad. It's not great. Maybe my 
my gasoline's a little old too. It is good to get out and ride. It's got a beautiful day today. It's about 70. I'm a little surprised. Crooked ah. bushes. I'm not hearing the peepers. Maybe this thing is making more noise than I'm. No. The peeping crowd should be peeping away. Wow. This is a hard rider. Hard tail. I'm in high range. So, we got both dashboard lights working. The only thing that's not OEM is the starter will not engage if you're not in neutral. So you can't electrically start it in gear. But, if you're in gear and you pull the string, you can start it. The other situation, I don't consider it a big deal, but um, um, if your battery's really weak, below 12 volts, you can't get a spark out of it. So you got to make sure you have a battery to it. It doesn't use the onboard CD or the onboard stator, other than for charging the battery. So I guess the other onboard stator. what this thing will do. Yeah, I normally don't have to adjust these carburetors. I'm a little surprised. This one didn't really behave all that well. So I, I had a twist tweak the um, idle mixture. Normally I just open the idle mixture up one full turn and it's all happy. This one was a little fussier. I had to give it another little more than a half a turn. I'll show you reverse. So. There you go. See neutral. Here's reverse. See the lights on? So. We're in low. There you go. I love it when it comes together. No complaints here. 
what do I have left? I have to tie up the cables in the front. And... I gotta kind of patch up the gas tank. And I gotta do the front forks. Boy, this thing needed a lot of love. Reminds me of myself. <laughs> that has been running a little bit. Probably turn that idle down. There you go. Yep, right back to neutral. The life is good. That's all it does, it takes to shut it down. All right, I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. On some of these machines, you really got to get back to the basics, right? Um, the original ignition system didn't work even after I changed those parts. Not quite sure what its problem is. It would kind of fire and then stop. But, you know, I disconnected the uh, disabled part of that inhibit let's call it the inhibit circuit so that was disconnected i'm not quite sure why it was uh playing that for me but when you could do this right who needs uh who needs the oem ignition kind of kind of allows you to to get around problems so i'm gonna clean up this wiring a little more Right, make it a little prettier. Tie it up. I left the OEM wiring there. Um, I'm going to give Steve back his CDI and um, coil. Just in case he wants to plug all that stuff back in. Um, yeah, I didn't, didn't remove anything. So it's all good. Anyway, I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, get out and enjoy each and every day. You really don't know what you're getting, so make sure you enjoy it while you have it. Bye now.